My story on one side of my family is unique to black America. My great-grandmother was Sally Walton, and she, like many others, was born a slave. But she was born in a community that today's historical maps do not even reflect her or her mother or her grandmother or the community where she lived. Sally was born in the Choctaw Nation and she was born a slave of Indians. Now Sally's ties to the Choctaw Nation were spoken about when I was a child. Sally was alive when I was born. She did not die until 1961 so I knew her well. We had documents that she had. She talked about land that she had, she had obtained and it wasn't until 1991, years, 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 decades after she had passed, that I really went looking for other pieces of documentation. And when I found the first document on the family that reflected her life and history a little bit more, and that also proved beyond a doubt that there was her connection to Indian territory, there was also another revelation. She was also born a slave. Choctaw Nation was clear, bold letters at the top of that document, and there it was, the slave owner from the Choctaw Nation was identified. Her mother was also a slave, and the owner of her mother was identified. Her father was Choctaw Indian, and there were many like her that I found in a large record set called Dawes Records. As I said, I knew Sally when I was a child. She was in her 90s, and when she died in 1961, she was just my nana. She was my heart. But until I found that document, I never knew that in my lifetime I had known someone who was born enslaved. So I had to educate myself, which was a challenge. I found dozens of other people who lived nearby, whose surnames I recognized. They were friends, they were neighbors, these were people whom I knew. And I realized their ancestors had also been slaves of Indians in Oklahoma. Their ancestors were Cherokee slaves, Choctaw slaves, Chickasaw slaves, Creek slaves, and Seminole slaves. It was amazing to make that discovery. The typical maps that you see that reflect the slave trade in America always omit what was at that time Indian territory. Why even your map on CNN reflects the population of American slaves but it clearly omits a substantial portion of slaves in America. Those who were taken on the Trail of Tears westward into Indian territory. Now, why this historical fact is not widely known or why it's not taught is still a mystery to me, especially since there are so many records of people who were later called freedmen. The untold story, which was part of Sally's story, was that there were not just a handful of people who were enslaved, who lived west of the American border, but there were literally thousands who were. Now my great-grandmother Sally and her husband, my great-grandfather, were both Choctaw freedmen, as was my grandfather, my great-uncle Houston, and my aunt. They were also among thousands of freedmen who received land allotments in the Choctaw Nation and they themselves also had friends and associates who were Chickasaw freedmen who also received land. This history is amazing and now more are beginning to discover their own ties to Indian territory and the five tribes. I have learned 
that even a former anchorman from CNN is a descendant of Chickasaw Friedman. Their stories were remarkable because these were men and women freed in 1866, a year after the Civil War, and these individuals remained on the western frontier. They lived through the Civil War, yet they lived to obtain their freedom. They saw with their own eyes westward expansion, they lived through the Oklahoma land rush, and finally when statehood occurred in 1907, they became American citizens. It was still not great news because the very first law passed in the state of Oklahoma was Senate Bill Number 1, a bill that made separation of the races legal. They became American citizens and were thrown immediately into a land of segregation and racial intolerance until the Civil Rights Movement. But so many people share this history. I mentioned that a former anchorman from CNN is a Chickasaw Friedman descendant. Why, there's a Pulitzer Prize winning author, a writer, journalist, who's also a descendant of Cherokee Friedman, and the father of the late John Hope Franklin was also a Chickasaw Friedman. I ended up writing a book about this history and about methods of researching this history in 1993. And the expanded edition of that book was just released, in fact, last year. But this story is still untold on the larger historical landscape. And perhaps this challenge to tell this untold story still motivates me. Now, I also research other lines of my history with several Civil War soldiers and on stories, wonderful stories of survival from Mississippi to Tennessee to South Carolina to Virginia. But this untold and strangely hidden history of America's forgotten slaves is emerging now from Oklahoma. It's more than 100,000 documented descendants of Cherokee, Choctaw, Chickasaw, Creek, and Seminole nations. These individuals whose ancestors designated as freedmen from Indian Territory are just beginning to have our stories told. And I'm just always anxious to tell people, here's another story that people need to be aware of, one of those unwritten chapters in American history. And of course, I thank Sally, whom I also knew and loved, because she was my babysitter until I went to kindergarten, and she was my heart. And from her, I learned so much, and perhaps it's Sally's spirit that motivates me to tell her story.